men are not as complicated as you think. Now, I know that sounds ridiculous to some of you, right? But for real, men are a lot simpler than many women want to give them credit for. And I think where the problem is, or the struggle is, is a woman understanding or accepting the way that a man perceives life, relationships, what he needs versus what she thinks makes sense or what she thinks it should be, okay? And a woman's unwillingness to accept and embrace his needs, his desires, what he feels is important is what creates a lot of conflict and destroys the potential of some relationships. But when that woman knows, knows the things I'm about to mention to you in this video, that makes her very attractive to a man, very, very much so. But when a woman knows these things that I'm about to mention in this video, it makes her very attractive to a man. So let's get right into it and be sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel. Anyway, so the first thing that makes you very easily attractive to a man is when you know that relationships aren't all about a woman's happiness. What do I mean by that? It does not mean your happiness is not important, okay? It does not mean it's not a priority. However, there's a lot of women, maybe you may not, that have fallen into this way of thinking that it's all about him proving to her. It's all about she's the prize. It's all about happy wife, happy life. And it's not that I necessarily disagree with that kind of ideology, so to speak. I think we have to dissect it. It's just that women may not realize that when you keep thinking like that, you're forgetting about his happiness too. And so when you are a woman that shows that you know it's about the both of us, that we are both a prize in this situation. I know a lot of people don't like that, okay? But, I'm, but think about this for a second. A good man is a blessing to a woman, just as a good woman is a blessing to a man. If both sides don't embrace that way of thinking, you will end up with a one-sided relationship. So when a woman understands that, listen, his needs, his feelings, his desires are as, a, as important as mine, this makes you a much more desirable man, a woman to that man. And I think that for a lot of women, what, what happens is sometimes it's not that you're intentionally trying to dismiss or, or consciously and blatantly trying to dismiss his feelings and his desires. Many of you. I do believe that there's a lot of great women who do embrace this mindset of we have to pour into each other. However, it's very easy as a woman to get so caught up in how you feel about things that you become blind to how he's feeling, especially in moments when you're vulnerable, especially in moments where maybe there's something that you aren't getting right now. And because you're feeling some kind of way about it, your focus is on the fact that he is not pouring into you, but you're forgetting the fact that, but you haven't been pouring into him either, all right? And we're not doing tit for tat, but we do have to make sure we're always doing our part. So being mindful of that and taking a step back and saying, okay, is he happy too? It's not just, am I happy? Is he happy too? What can we do to make each other happy? Knowing this, embracing this will take you very far with a man. All right, so the next thing when a woman knows this, it makes her very attracted to a man. And, and please, quick disclaimer, this might trigger some of y'all, <laughs> all right? I'm, I'm warning you in advance. I love you. You know I mean no harm. Take a deep breath, all right? Listen and let me explain and break the whole thing down. Do not react quickly to this. But the next thing is when you know that giving him freedom doesn't mean he'll cheat on you. Here's what I mean. As a coach, I have sat down with many couples. I've lost count. I don't, it's, it's too many to, to give you the number. And one of the reoccurring themes that I've seen in so many relationships is essentially the woman putting all these, I'm not even going to say boundaries, all these restrictions on the man, all right? On how he can move, what he can do, who he can hang with, all these different things. You know, there's a lot of talk about men being controlling, 
But the reality is that there's a lot of women who did the same. And not in a controlling, I want to... Again, it's not. It, it may not be in this conscious, I'm trying to run you and maliciously hurt you kind of controlling, but it's really, a, I'm controlling the situation for what I perceive to be my safety. This is the woman, okay? But what happens is you end up suffocating the man in a way that creates a bigger problem later. So let's give an example. I know of, of situations where the man is not allowed to take trips with his boys, all right? Now, some of you may be saying, why the hell he need to go anywhere with his boys anyway? If I'm not there, what does he need to be doing with them? Listen, some men may not care to go on trips with their boys. For some people, this may not be important, right? But that's not the point. It's the principle of this. Her, her unwillingness to allow something that he actually wants to do because in reality, she's fearing that allowing him to do this will lead to him acting inappropriately is only going to work against her more. You got to understand, if this man is going to cheat on you, if he's truly a cheater at heart, then adding all these restrictions doesn't stop that, all right? You don't need to, to control the situation. It's actually better to let the man do what he wants to do in a respectful manner, of course, with communication, with understanding. But if he wants to go on that trip, let him. And then, and, and rest upon the fact that you as a woman, let's be real. It, y'all gonna st A lot of times y'all still catch it if he does do something he's not supposed to do, okay? And I'm sorry to laugh, but I'm just saying, you guys are just so good at picking up on stuff. So you almost got to trust. It's kind of like what, what's done in the dark will come to light. The truth will be told. You don't have to go searching for it all the time. But the point is, letting, him, letting the man do his thing will allow you to see his true character. All right? It's almost like if you're worried about someone stealing your money, what is a quicker way to expose if they're a thief? To always hide the money when they're around or to leave the money out and see if they take it? And I'm not saying we do this to purposely try to set people up. But what I'm saying is, unless you are someone who just naturally hides your money, okay, that's how you live, that's how you live. But what I'm saying is, you don't need to add all these extra restrictions thinking that that's going to somehow save you from having to deal with inappropriate behavior, okay? So what happens in a lot of these situations, because yes, I do understand there are men out there who will take it and run who will do things they're not supposed to do, all right? And I understand how that's a concern for a lot of women. But it's almost like you're making the good guys out there who won't violate, who won't do anything appropriate, pay for the sins of the other guys, all right? There are men who can go on these trips and they're going to respect their relationship. But they want to be able to go out with their boys. They want to be able to hang out sometimes late at night. And it's not anything to maliciously hurt you or, or disregard how you feel. The problem is that, again, if you continuously restrict them in a way that takes away their freedom, what happens is it's almost like caging in a lion. And you constantly keep him in the cage, constantly keep him in the cage. And then when he one day finally gets out, he doesn't know how to act. All right. He acts a damn fool because it's almost like he, he, he has to indulge in this moment rather than realizing you don't have to you don't have to be this way. You, you, you can do this at any time. And I hope I'm being clear because I feel like I'm jumping around a little bit. But what I'm trying to get at here is that, and, and let me also make clear, I believe in freedom on both sides. <laughs> okay, I don't, I'm not just saying let your man do whatever. And I think the woman should go on trips with her friends. I think the man should be able to. I think the people should be able to live their life. But yes, share their worlds together. Be honest with each other. Be on the same page. Because when, and this is the point I want to get to, by trying to restrict him, you can create resentment, all right? And that resentment now turns into a bad attitude, now turns into maybe him not doing certain things, turns into you guys arguing. It, it has a domino effect to now start to spread all kinds of negativity into the relationship. It simply doesn't work. I would rather you, if, if you are hardcore pressed on, I don't want my man to be out there Go, hanging out with friends late at night, then I'd rather you find a man who does not care about doing that. 
Rather than taking a man who enjoys that and saying, now that you're in a relationship with me, done. You can't do it no more. No. Find a guy who, he, that's not his vibe. That's not his thing. That way you two won't have that conflict. Because if you try to suppress the man who actually enjoys his activities or try to take that away from him, that's going to cause more problems. So to get back to the original point, when a woman understands, hey, I can give you the freedom to do the things that you enjoy and not think you're always trying to cheat or creep and do something inappropriate, that's a very attractive thing for a man. All right, so now let's keep this moving. The next thing to know as a woman that makes him so easily attracted to you is that loving him, supporting him, and nurturing him doesn't make you weak, all right? So plain and simple, I think, and I believe it's more of an issue nowadays where a lot of women are feeling like, well, it's almost like when people say, be his peace, right? And, and a lot of women react to that with, why the hell I gotta be his peace? Why can't be my peace? And of course he should be your peace too, right? Y'all should be each other's peace, but I feel like, and not just I feel, I know there's a lot of women who have expressed this concern of, well, being that nurturing, loving, supporting woman is what gets you hurt, is what gets you taken advantage of. It, it puts you in a position of weakness. But, but then you don't realize that you become less desirable to a man when you have that kind of a mindset. You don't draw him in. You're no longer tapping into your feminine energy. You're no longer exuding that positivity that makes a man desire you more. And so the woman who can understand and embrace that doing these things is not weakness. It is strength. It is walking in your power as a woman. And if anything, here's the reality. It'll, it, you feel better when you can do it. And what I mean by that is like, when you're not able to be loving, nurturing, and supporting, it's, it's going against your inner desire, your inner wiring, all right? And it creates a conflict within you, a lack of peace, because now you're in this situation where you can't even feel safe enough to let that out, or you don't allow yourself to let that out. And because of that, you're not having the positive energy that you need for yourself, but releasing yourself from that bondage of the fear and the concern and, and walking in your truth and in, in your, your true power, you become more, you enhance your quality of life. So before you even get to him, you feel better because you operate in who you are. You're no longer at conflict with it. All right. And, and if you don't think you're, you have an internal wiring to be loving, nurturing, supporting, and of course, I'm, I'm never going to say 100% for every woman because there's always exceptions to every rule. But I would argue, think about the fact that that's one of the reasons why sometimes, and I, I'm sorry if this offends some, but this is the reason why a lot of times there are women who rush to have babies when they don't have a relationship. This might be a sore topic for many, something that I probably have to create a different video for, but I know for a fact there are women who may give up on love and relationships with a man, but they still have a desire to pour love into a human being. And so now the baby becomes that outlet, becomes that source of not just where I can throw my love and operate in my natural state, but also receive that love without fear of betrayal and hurt. All right. And yes, this is why there are some women who will intentionally go have a baby, even with a man they don't plan on being with. All right. And again, I know this is a touchy subject, but it's real because they desire that baby so bad. And, and, and for some, it's easier just like I've had women tell me, just give me the baby. You can keep the man. <laughs> I'm sorry to laugh, but like literally the verbatim, this is what said to me multiple times. Okay. And so, and that speaks to the fact that yes, a lot of women, they want that. And I think that again, what happens is unfortunately in romantic relationships with men, men are viewed as a threat. Men are viewed as potential uh, offenders who are going to destroy you, damage you, so on and so forth. So I can't allow myself to be open to him in that way. But when you can conquer that, which you do that through healing and you do that through, through growing in life, 
and you're able to still walk and, and give that and bring that energy to a relationship to a man, then yes, he will become very much easily attracted to you. All right, so hopefully uh, y'all are still with me. <laughs> you ain't going nowhere yet. I know some, you know, sometimes I say some things that punch people in the gut, but again, always with love. All right, so let's keep it going. So the next thing that when a woman knows this, it makes her very attractive to a man, is the fact that men are visual and looking good for your man is a beautiful thing. All right? I need to jump straight to another touchy subject before I really cover this whole thing. And that's a woman's hair. I know, please just work with me. Let me explain. Let me explain. All right. I am in no way saying that a man should necessarily have authority over your hair. However, I've seen so many situations where women in relationships or married. Let's, let's just use married because I definitely think if you're dating a guy, this is more of a moot point. But let's say you, you actually end up marrying this man, all right? And, you, and I'm telling you this now because you have to be aware of this even in the dating process, all right? Even though it may not fully apply yet. And the woman feels like, well, listen, if I want to do something with my hair, I don't need to talk to him. I do what I want. I come home and that's it. And there are some men who generally don't care. And there are some men who have been completely turned off by what the woman did, all right? And there are people who will say, well, it's, it's not, you know... Who cares what he thinks? It's whatever she wants to do. And here's the reason why this can become such a problem. It's bigger than the hair. All right? It's a level of, one, respect. And two, again, caring about the fact that what is attractive to him. Now, one of the reasons why a lot of women have a hard time grasping this concept is because to the women, they'll say, well, we don't tell men what to do with their hair. Well, the reality is that the average man can't come home with a drastic change of hair, okay? So you're not going to really have this huge switch in his appearance. So it's, it's a very different scenario. But let's use me for an example. Let's say we're married and let's say you love my hair. You love my locks. You love my beard. Some of you may not like my hair or my beard, <laughs> but that's a different story. But let's say you love it. And I come home one day and it's gone. No heads up, no conversation, no consultation, no considering how you, it would impact you and your, your level of attractiveness to me. No, I just go and do it and say, hey, here, suck it up. This is what I want to do. You would feel some kind of way. Maybe, yes, you could eventually get past the hair change, the physical appearance of it. But you will feel slighted. In the fact that I didn't even sit down and talk to you about something that you did love very much and that raised your level of attraction to me if attraction is important to you. And listen, I believe attraction is important to everyone, at least to a certain extent, some more than others. So let's flip it back to the men. When a woman understands that I should at least consider how my man feels about the way I present myself, that makes you more attractive because, again, so many are dismissive of that when it comes to men. So many are dismissive of the fact that the man wants to be visually stimulated even after he's in a relationship with you. There are women who think, or not just think, there are women who will work hard to look good and keep themselves up a certain way to get a man and then drop the whole routine <laughs> once the man is there, okay? And to them, it's, well, if you love me for me, this shouldn't be a problem. And whether he says it or not, for a lot of men, not all, but for a lot of men, that creates resentment. That creates a lot of saltiness, all right? Because again, physical attraction is a huge ingredient to romantic relationship. And as I stated from the beginning, Men are visual creatures. A woman who embraces and accepts that is more attracted to a man because he feels a greater safety in knowing she's going to be willing to pour into me in that way. She's not going to, to just let that fall to the wayside and act like it shouldn't be important. And this is one of the fears that men have. If there's two fears, and, and it's more than two, 
But two fears that men have about after you get married to a woman is her letting herself go and the sex going away. All right? Because those are two things they have seen commonly happen in so many relationships. And this, this creates a hesitancy. I didn't say the word clearly, but you know what I'm saying. This, this causes men to be hesitant in being willing to marry a woman. Contributes to it. Contributes. Because there's other factors. But it definitely contributes. He wants to have some level of security in knowing I'll still, you're going to still work to make sure I'm attracted to you. When I say work, put in the effort. All right. And again, it doesn't mean it's only on the woman that the man shouldn't do, do it as well. Of course, I believe in both sides doing it. But in talking about what the woman has to understand and embrace, yes, that's extremely, extremely important. So again, I hope I ain't pissed some of y'all off with the hair, <laughs> but I, I needed to break that down because I see it happen so much. And again, remember, it's bigger than just the hair. And let me say this, at the end of the day, am I saying if a woman feels passionately about, let's say, cutting her hair and her husband doesn't want her to do it, right? I'm not saying that you just flat out. It's a tough situation, to be honest with you. And I think that depending on the situation, the various reasons, the woman, you know, the man has to learn how to be encouraging and supporting in certain ways. If this woman feels like I need to do this for me, yes, of course. But at least y'all had to talk about it. At least he was being, he was able to become mentally prepared. Now, again, some men don't care. Some men don't care if you're bald, long hair, wig, weave. As long as you're happy, they're good. That's not a focal point for them. But there are many men who do. And you should at least be willing to consider his feelings in that matter. And in all matters that apply to him being attracted to you and maintaining that attraction. All right. So we got a few more to go. But before I do, again, people are always asking me about coaching, you know, getting their questions answered, wanting more guidance. And I have my special coaching program for you to take advantage of and join today where you're going to learn how to heal, tap into your feminine energy, hearing God more clearly, meeting more relationship-minded quality men, all right, and so much more. This program isn't just about meeting a guy. It's about you increasing your overall quality of life so that you can be happier regardless of your relationship status. And so with that, Join the program today. Go to receivingmyblessings.com or click the link in the description or in the comment section. All right. So now next on this list of things for a woman to know that make you more attractive to a man is the way to a man's heart is through his stomach. <laughs> now, listen, this, this is not going to apply to everybody. Everybody don't care about food like that. But I do think that plenty of men, if, if there's one of the things that men you hear, I don't want to use the word complain, but talk about that has changed from what women used to do more is being able to cook. Now, I notice I said being able to cook rather than saying being willing to cook. Of course, being willing to cook is part of it, but being able to because a lot of people stop learning how to cook. Now, listen, it, it, this is not to say that a man should not learn how to cook as well, all right? Because, I mean, he's got to be able to take care of himself. God forbid you're not able to, then, he, you know, he should be able to survive and, 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 you know, get in the kitchen a little bit. However, it does make a woman much more attractive when not only is she willing, but she's able, she's good at it, and she loves it. Let me tell you, one of the things I tell, I've told some women in my group to do, I said, listen, um... You know, women, there's a lot of women out there who will post provocative pics on the internet. And I ain't judging that right now. I'm just mentioning it, right? And I say, well, listen, how about posting some, some dishes you made <laughs> that look real nice? Let me tell you, you start posting food you cooked. That, and again, it got to look good. Don't post no, no, no nonsense. But it looks good on your feed, Instagram, Facebook, whatever. And watch how you start gaining some more attention. It works. It works, all right? It is definitely a quality that men still love to see in a woman. Now, again, are there some men who prefer cooking themselves? Yes, I have a homeboy who loves cooking. He doesn't mind doing all the cooking. 
I would argue, though, those are exceptions to the rule. The vast majority of men would love a woman who, again, is willing and able and loves to cook. And I don't want to use the word I'm, who, 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 again, doesn't mind serving the man. And I said, listen, I was so hesitant to say the word serving because I know how, how triggered some people are going to be by that word. All right. But I couldn't figure out other words to use in the moment. But I'm not saying serving like being his slave, all right? And I think this is part of the thing. This goes back to the whole, a woman who understands being nurturing, supporting, and loving doesn't make you weak. There's nothing wrong with serving. Let's have a serious moment here. Being a servant in life is a beautiful thing, all right? We, we should be serving each other. I know, we, for those of you who are believers, we are servants of God. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with humbling yourself in a way that says, I can do for this individual and pour into them and make them a priority in this moment. You know what I'm saying? And take pride in it and do it with love and understand that when you're doing it for the right person, it will be appreciated, it will be cherished, and you will get a return on that. And not that it's an investment, but you, you will get reciprocation from that because that person receiving that love for you will want to pour that love back into you, all right? So we've got to remove this negative perception of things like catering to your partner, serving your partner. We should be doing that. There's nothing wrong with that. Embrace that. Just remember, the issue is not the catering and the serving. It's who you're doing it for. And I simply want you to do it for the right man. But, but getting... Tying this to the, 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 the main topic of this video, you know, the things that women know that make you more attractive to him. Because I, I, if you're dating a guy, right, this isn't really a time to be serving, so to speak, or catering, so to speak. Because, you know, I, I, don't, I don't tell women to do wife duties for a man you're just dating. However, you should be able to show you have that spirit and mindset, that you are a woman who embraces that, who is willing to do that, yes, when we are in the right dynamic, when we are committed, when we are married, this is what you'll get from me. You know what I'm saying? I, I, you can show that and show that he, he can then see what he is signing himself up for by moving forward with you without you doing all these extra things in the moment that might put you in a bad position. So consider that. You know what I'm saying? But definitely getting back to the, the food, food's a great thing. <laughs> and it definitely, definitely uh, can make a woman much more attractive. All right, so let's keep this going. And let me tell you, this, this might be the video that I have the most, I'm a little scared to say certain things because I heard y'all to piss y'all off, but no, nah, like I ain't scared, bump that. I'm gonna say it, all right? So here's what it is. The next one is when a woman knows to have sex is not enough. Let me explain. Don't, don't jump to any conclusions yet. So, okay, first let's get out the way that I am not saying that you need to go have sex with this man. I, I fully encourage and, and think abstinence is a great thing. Waiting till marriage is a beautiful thing. But again, I always say, I understand that, the, that most people, most of us struggle in that area or may cross those lines. I'm not here to judge you or to, you know, make this a right or wrong at this moment. I just want to talk about this area of a relationship that many engage in. And when I say to have sex is not enough, what I mean by that is a lot of women fall into this thinking of just showing up in the bedroom is I did my part. Just allowing him to engage with me physically is, okay, I'm doing what, what he wants. But sex is so much more than that. And what he's hoping to receive is so much more than that. So to have sex is not enough because it's not just having sex, it's having the sex that he likes. You know, like simply getting it in doesn't necessarily mean it's being done in a way that's truly enjoyable, all right? Not to mention, Rather than just being willing to do it, are you ever initiating it? Because men want to feel desire too. 
He, he doesn't want to want it to always be on him to make it happen. So it's not just have the sex. It's, it's the quality of it. It's you initiating it. It's you being into it. Now, of course, I completely understand there's a lot of other factors that play into that, play into your sexual receptiveness that he has to understand. Granted, but it's important that women get out of the mindset of just having the sex is okay, I'm, I'm good here. Because I see a lot of women, when things go left in the relationship, they'll say, oh, we had sex and you know, I, I gave him what he wanted. No, you gave him what you wanted to give him. You didn't give him what he was looking for. And so it's important when a man knows, because what did I say earlier? Two of the big fears that men have is a woman letting herself go and a woman, the sex falling off. And so when he, uh, when he can see or be, be, be shown that you're going to embrace that pouring into his needs and his desires in this area, this is going to resonate with him very much. And now let's just say you're a woman who is waiting till marriage. So you'll say, well, listen, well, I'm not trying to have sex till marriage. So how is he supposed to know that I'm willing? Picture this. Could you imagine? Because remember, I believe that we can have discussions and dive into each other into each other's sexual mindsets in a way that allows us to know what we're signing up for without having to engage physically. But picture if you were to sit down with a man on a date and y'all talked about, you know, when you eventually do physically engage and you say to him, listen, right now I'm not having sex, but when that time comes, I am fully willing to pour into you the way that you need, you know, fulfill your desires, learn whatever things you want me to learn. I want to make sure you are happy and satisfied. That man might bust one right there on the table. <laughs> I'm sorry. I know that sounds disgusting, but I'm saying like he will lose it. Like to hear a woman say she will fulfill his desires, embrace his needs, learn, learn what he likes. Men don't hear that. Men don't get to experience that in a lot of cases. Men have to kind of navigate through, okay, what she's comfortable with. And of course, I want you, I don't want you to do things that go against your morals and things of that nature, but being open enough to pour into men that way. And of course, again, I will say he has to be the same for you, but showing him that you have that mindset is enough for him to at least feel like, okay, this, I, it, it, he, he, will know, he will feel more confident about being able to move forward with you. Because again, that is not something that is expressed typically or shown to a lot of men. And that's why it plays such a huge, huge role. So when you embrace and understand that having sex itself is not enough, you become so much more attractive to him. All right, now last but not least, and again, I hope you are still with me because <laughs> this one was a little, little wild today. But anyways, the last one is when you understand and have emotional awareness and you embrace transparency. And I'll, I'll even say it as emotional transparency. What am I saying here? First, let's start with emotional awareness. A lot of women struggle, knowingly or unknowingly, with being emotionally selfish, all right? However you're feeling in the moment trumps anything else that's going on with him. And so I've seen situations where the man could be having a rough day, but because you're feeling some kind of way about something you, and you're lost in how you feel and your emotions, you're not aware enough to pick up on the fact that this is not the moment to be trying to come at him with this, all right? Now, it doesn't mean never discuss the issue. It doesn't mean uh, completely suppress how you feel. I, you know I don't believe in that. I believe there has to be discussion. We have to be able to get things off our chest. But sometimes there's a time and a place. And we have to understand that if we're not aware of when this is a bad moment, we can make things worse. A lot of women don't grasp that, all right? Not saying all, a lot. 
And so they, they picked some of the worst moments to try to discuss things or to bombard this man emotionally in a way that he can't even handle it. Now he feels overwhelmed or he feels dismissed because again, you're not considering how he feels in the moment. Or here's a different level of lacking emotional awareness. You'll have a man having a vulnerable moment expressing things to the woman and she hijacks the moment and makes it about her. She basically turns the tables and now the discussion becomes about her. Now, this can happen with friends. This can, every, I think everyone maybe has experienced that where you're talking to someone and it's, it's about you and they want to make it about them now. <laughs> and, and that's an annoying thing, okay? It's like, yo, let me have my moment. And so as a woman, you've got to learn how to be aware in that. And, and that comes from emotionally maturing and mastering your emotions in a way that you don't allow it to get the best of you. But remember, I also added transparency because one of the things that frustrates so many men is, you know, the whole, when you hear people say, you know, he can't read your mind. And the, the, the fact that a lot of women expect the man to to understand or to, to be mindful of how she's feeling, to basically, to some degree, have the awareness I just talked about. And I do think that a man should work to get in tune with his woman in a way that he does develop the awareness, right? However, it doesn't mean as a woman, you don't learn how to be transparent. So what I'm saying is, if something is wrong and he says, what's wrong? You don't say nothing when something is, all right? You say you can say, I don't want to talk about it right now. Let's just leave it alone for the moment, whatever. Like, and he has to respect that in him understanding that maybe right now is not the time to dive into this, okay? But to say nothing, and then one, that can frustrate him because it's like, well, he's still seeing this bad vibe from you, but you're not telling him what it is. Now, what that creates is the opportunity for people to start to overanalyze, jump to the wrong conclusions, and then take actions that only make matters worse or create frustration and resentment because you're creating confusion in that moment. All right. So the woman who embraces and understands the man needs transparency, just tell us what it is. That, that, that in itself is what contributes to being a man's peace. That brings peace to a relationship. When I don't have to worry about having a guessing game with my partner, when I know I can just talk to them and they're going to make things as clear as possible for me. Again, it doesn't mean the man should not learn how to get more in tune with his woman. But both sides have to, let's not make things harder than they need to be. That's what it boils down to. The easier we can make this, the better we make this relationship for the both of us. And the much more attractive this woman becomes to that man. Hey, thank you for watching this video. Be sure to check this one out right here. And I'll see you there. Start off addressing this right now. So the first question before we get into how she knows he's the how he knows she's the one is how long does it take a man to know she's the one? So the answer to that question is 